Hello, welcome back to my channel. Um, today's video is going to be a sculpting video. I'm going to go through the whole sculpting process of making this uh, prairie dog head. This doll is for uh, the Calgary Zoo. It's one of the dolls that they requested this time, uh, along with a couple of other ones. But um, yeah, more videos on those as well to come. So if you want to know how I sculpted him, then uh, keep watching. So I'm using some glass eyes for this particular sculpt. I have a new glass eye or a new video on um, my Patreon all about eyes, about the eyes that I use um, and what sort of techniques and stuff. So you can check that out for my $5 and up tiers. You get uh, instant access to it as well. Um, and I also have a embedding eye tutorial over in my um, on my shop at creaturesinnet.com. It's embedding it into resin. So if you aren't sure how to do that, then you can check that out. So this one is going to have painted eyes and I'm using a water-based acrylic paint to paint these eyes as well. So moving on to the actual sculpture. So I'm going to be using Sculpey Original. It's the softer white, white Sculpey. Sculpey also comes in Super Sculpey and Sculpey Firm. Super Sculpey is the beige colored one and Sculpey Firm is the gray colored one. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> uh, I like working with Sculpey Original because it's quite soft and I like working with softer clays. But um, sometimes with softer polymer clays, they become a little bit more brittle um, than the harder ones. But yeah, just, just keep in mind and try them all and see which one you like working with. So for the core, I'm using an aluminium ball and it's just aluminium foil that you uh, can get that you use for cooking and stuff like that. So you just roll it into a rough shape of the skull and then you can start covering it with the Sculpey Original. Um, this means the weight of the actual sculpture is a lot lighter and also the Sculpey that you're applying to the head is thinner. So when you go to bake it in your oven, it um, has a better chance of curing properly and baking um, rather than having something that's really thick. It just will never, <laughs> will never, the heat won't get into the core to bake it. So always use an armature when you're using polymer clays. So for this particular sculpt, I had a bit of trouble getting the um, proportions right and a prairie dog is very similar to other rodents as well. So I seem to tend to have a problem with rodent heads, I guess, or rodent mouths. They've got a specific look to them and it's very easy to um, change the, the, the mouth shape to make it not look like a rodent. So um, yeah, it's very important to just look at some reference images and make sure you've got the angling right and making sure that the, all the proportions are right as well. Um, I always have lots of different uh, reference images up on my computer next to me for side views, front views, uh, and if you can find any other view that will help you as well, definitely uh, pop them up on your screen to help you sculpting. So there's a lot of um, fiddling around with this sculpt just because I was... Um, yeah, having trouble with the getting the rodent look to it. So a lot of it is fiddling around. A lot of it I've cut out as well. So it was just me sort of comparing to the reference images and stuff a lot. So it took a lot longer to sculpt this one than all my other ones. And surprisingly, the bongo ones were much quicker to sculpt than this one. Um, so maybe in the future, I'll do some more sculpting on rodents to get that, um, to get that experience up. Um, and yeah.
So once I was happy with the basic shape, um, I can start working on the look of the eyes. So sometimes when you add the eyes, the whole sculpture starts coming together a little bit better and then you can find and see what parts of uh, the rest of the sculpted sculpture doesn't work. Um, so I always try to rough things out first before I move on to um, sculpting any detailing in or anything like that. Uh, it's always important to get your eye shape right as well and your placement right as well. Um, otherwise they end up looking something different. So prairie dog eyes have sort of off to the side eyes so they can have full view of any predators around. Um, so yeah, it's always important to get the eyes right and you can always build up your eye sockets with your clay um, and then and then also build it up with the um, little worm technique that I do all the time, making some eyelids and stuff like that. Once I was happy with the basic shape of the eyes as well, obviously the head needed to be bulked out a little bit because they have um, a little bit of a bigger cheek area. So I added that as well to see um, if I was happy with the way it looked. I added more than what was needed because I can always um, take away subtractive carve uh, the cheeks off as well. You could always add more, it just depends what you're more comfortable with. So I just added more and then I could um, refine it down a little bit when um, I was happy with the placement of the cheeks. Prairie dogs have tiny little ears, they're kind of cute <laughs> and they kind of look like human ears as well so I decided to uh, sculpt them off sculpture. 
Um, with the ears, I always tend to roll to similar sized balls, so I have the right amount of clay um, between the both of them, so they turn out roughly the same. Obviously, they're going to look a bit, little bit different when you're sculpting it, uh, just like real ears are different. Um, so I use a little ball tool to do all the little details inside of the ear and then I can add it onto the actual head and add any more details that I think it needs. I went along and added some fur texture once I was happy with the overall sculpture. Adding the fur texture sort of makes the um, sculpture feel a bit more complete and it sort of makes it look like more, more of what you're sculpting so um, that's kind of one of the main reasons why I do the sculpture, the, the fur texture on the sculpture. Um, I know it's going to be covered by faux fur normally but um, yeah I find it really helpful to make sure the proportions are right and it actually looks like what I'm wanting it to look like. Uh, it also helps with um, adhering the, the glue and the fabric to the head as well. So a couple of reasons why I did it and um, yeah, I'll probably continue to do it. I don't do it all the time. Um, I mainly do it a little bit around bits that are going to have thinner areas of faux fur applied or um, bits that are going to be exposed. So it's usually around the nose, the mouth, the snout area and the eyes, maybe the ears sometimes. Um, so yeah I don't always do the whole sculpture but for this one because I was a little bit unhappy with the way it was turning out while I was sculpting it I wanted to see it as a finished sculpture so I'm glad I did it because um, yeah I think it looks like a prairie dog. <laughs> Alrighty, so that is it for me today This uh, for this video. Um, thanks for watching. I really uh, appreciate the support. Um, thanks to my patrons for supporting me as well. Again, I appreciate that as well. Uh, so if you want to support me over on Patreon, the link is in the description box. You get access to a whole heap of uh, 
Patreon exclusive videos and tutorials, body patterns and printables and a whole lot of other things. Uh, so check it out if you're interested in that. Also my site, uh, my website, my shop on my website is having a Black Friday sale. So check that out um, using the code Black Friday 2020. Um, you can find it on my social medias if you're unsure of what code to use. And that's 20% off uh, the entire store. Uh, you can also check me out on Instagram and Facebook at Creatures of Nat. Um, and I will uh, catch you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.